I've got this shock wave animation in my app that was originally inspired by a similar effect in iOS when you drop a new widget onto the home screen. I'm first going to show how to gradually build this animation starting from a single cell, then making one row and eventually assembling the whole grid. You'll see that it's relatively straightforward to make it work inside the main app where you have access to SwiftUI's face and keyframe animators. But then as a bonus, I'll show how I made it work on a home screen widget that doesn't have any of those fancy APIs. So let's first look at a single grid cell. Its animation needs to have three phases. First is the default identity phase where nothing happens. Second is when it compresses. And the third, when it quickly expands and then gradually settles back to the first phase and its normal size. In the code, I'm going to define all three phases as an enum and also set a scale adjustment property that tells how the scale of the cell will change for every phase. Then I'm attaching a phase animator to the cell and applying scale effect modifier with the scale of 1 but adjusted by the scale adjustment property of the current phase. The key here is to properly define animations for every phase. It kind of depends on the look and feel that you are going for. In my case, I played around with a bunch of combinations and settled on this. It compresses smoothly and relatively slow, then rapidly expands twice as fast and then slowly bounces around its normal size until it finally settles. Adding also animation trigger when I tap on the cell and this is the result. Next step is to arrange a few of those cells into a row and make a wave when one of them is tapped. Just wrapping the whole thing with an H stack and 4 each would produce this result, which is of course not exactly what I'm going for, but it's a start. First I need to know the cell where the wave originated from. In this case it will be just the cell that was tapped. So I'm adding another state property and on tab gesture I'm saving the index of the cell into that property. Now for every cell I can calculate how far it is from the wave origin and based on that distance I can apply a slight delay to the animation. So further it is from the origin the more delay it will get. I'm applying the delay to the compressed phase because phase animator starts with it and all other phases will be delayed automatically. That already looks decent but right now it behaves like a wave with an infinite force and I'd like it to fade out like a real wave. So cells that are further from the origin would get less impacted, which is an inverse relationship compared to the delay. The only difference here is that I'm also going to normalize wave impact to get a value in 0 to 1 range. It will be just easier to work with in the code. First I'm getting the normalized distance, dividing it by the maximum distance. In this case it's just the highest index in the row. And then to get the wave impact I'm subtracting the normalized distance from 1, again because it's an inverse relationship. And now we can apply the wave impact to the scale adjustment. So if the wave impact is 1, meaning it's the origin cell, it will get the full scale adjustment. And if the wave impact is 0, there will be no scale adjustment. And if I want to make it fade out a bit faster or slower, I just need to play around with this wave impact value. Okay, next level is to make it two-dimensional by wrapping a single row with a for each and putting it inside the vstack. And then each cell will have a row and a column index. Looks kind of cool, but again, not the look I'm going for. The wave, of course, should expand in a circle, and the only change I need to make to achieve that is to calculate distance to the wave origin in two dimensions using the Pythagorean theorem that you thought you wouldn't ever need, but here we are. First, I'm adding a function to calculate distance between two points and calculating the maximum distance on the grid based on the number of rows and columns, which I'll later use to calculate wave impact for a given cell just as I did with a single row. Now converting wave origin state variable into a point and also for each cell defining a point with its coordinates because now I'm dealing with two dimensions. Then calculating distance using the function I defined before and normalizing using the maximum grid distance instead of the hard-coded constant and that's it. Everything else stays exactly the same. For the final result I've also added a slight brightness adjustment the same way as the scale adjustment. There is a link in the description to the full source of this example in case you want to see how it's done. So as I mentioned, the whole thing is relatively straightforward and it's barely a hundred lines of code, but things get tricky if you need to have this animation on the home screen widget, which I needed for my app. The only animation API available in a widget is the animation modifier on the view, so we can forget about phases or keyframes or anything fancy whatsoever. If you like coding puzzles, 
puzzles, I think you will enjoy this one. Let's start with the basic premise. So I have a widget that first reads some value from user defaults. It can also be a database or a network response. Important thing here is that this value can change and when it changes, I can trigger some animation. Then I'm fixing the wave origin to always be at the center of the grid just for simplicity of this demo, but it's also possible to have it on the tapped cell. I did this for one of the widgets in my app as well. Then there is the grid, which is exactly the same code as for the main app, but with phase animator removed, because again, it's not available in the widget context. And at the bottom, there is a button that triggers an app intent, which just increases the trigger value. So with this basic setup, I need to come up with a way to create this wave animation. There is also a link to an Xcode project in the description with this exact boilerplate. So if you want to try to solve it yourself, pause the video now and let me know in the comments what you come up with. And just in case there is no secret Swift UI API or something, everything you need to make it work is already in this code. To break it down, let's start again with a single square. As before, I want the animation where the square compresses and then expands with a continuous fluid motion. But I cannot do this multi-phase animation without the phase animator, right? Every time I trigger value updates, I can only change the scale of the square once, either to compress it or to expand. So what I can do is to say that because my trigger is an integer, even numbers will be the compressing phase and odd numbers will be expanding phase. So for even numbers, the scale goes down and for odd numbers, it returns back. Now I just add animations to those scale changes with an overshoot for the expanding phase and it starts to look like what I'm going for, but I still need to have the whole two phase motion every time the trigger changes. I cannot do much else with this single square anymore, but I can add another one and invert its phases. So even numbers will be for expanding phase and odd numbers will be for compressing. This by itself doesn't look too helpful, but now when I overlay those two in a Z stack, it creates this illusion of a single fluid motion every time the trigger value updates. I'm not sure if you're impressed by this solution, but I certainly was surprised that I was able to come up with something like this. Now to apply this approach to my widget, I first calculate the phase based on the current trigger value, so it will be either 0 or 1. Then I calculate animations delay based on the origin distance, the same way I did for the phase animator implementation, and then applying this delay to both compressing and expanding animations. And the last value is the scale adjustment for the compressing phase. I'm also multiplying by the wave impact here in order to achieve the wave fade out effect, so cells further from the origin won't be affected by the scale change that much. Next, I'm applying both the scale effect and animations to the cell view and saying that this square will be expanding when the phase is zero. Then wrapping it with the Z stack, copy pasting another cell view and changing the phase to be one. Now let's have a look at the final result. Since making this trick with alternating phases work for the grid, I used it a couple of more times in different widgets for other effects, so I think it's worth having it in your tool set. It just expands the range of animations you can do. So I hope it was useful. Don't forget to check links to the full source in the description. But that's it for this one. Thank you for watching. Cheers.